Let's talk about multiplying polynomials. First, let's start with just multiplying monomials. So if I want to multiply x times x, that's x squared. x times y, those are different variables. There's no way to combine them, so we would write xy. 2x times 3y. We can multiply these coefficients to get 6, but we have different variables, so we will just have xy x squared times y. Again, these are different variables. There's not a way to combine that. So we write x squared y. That's one term. x squared times x to the third power, or x cubed. Remember your exponent rules. That's product rule. And we will add those exponents. Here we'll multiply the coefficients, but the variables are different, so we keep them before we multiply some more complicated polynomials, I'm going to go over how the area model works. An area model is based on the idea of how we find area. If we want to multiply 12 times 12, we can think of it as an area with a length of 12 and a width of 12. If we multiply those, we find the area of 144. Now the reason I like area models is because you can break up numbers and you can apply an area model to lots of different concepts. If I wasn't sure what 12 times 12 was, I could break it up into 10 and 2 and 10 and 2. If I find the area of each of these boxes inside, I can add them together to find the total area. 10 times 10, 10 times 2, 10 times 2, and 2 times 2. Now if I add these together, I get 144. Algebra tiles are a great way to multiply polynomials. Here's an online version. You set up your two factors as a length and a width. Here's x plus 2 and x plus 3. We'll fill this in and the area will be our product. Notice here that 1 times x, that gives us a rectangle with a width of 1 and a length of x. So I continue filling this in, matching up this length and its width. Over here, I fill in with unit tiles. So here were our factors along the edges here, x plus 2 and x plus 3. In here, the area is the product. If we see what we have here, that total thing is our answer. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. If you're having trouble understanding multiplying polynomials, go back and play with some algebra tiles. Um, you can even work with negatives here. Let's set up an area model to help us multiply these polynomials. So here are our two factors, and we're going to set them up as a length and a width. We have x plus 3 and x plus 11. Now in each of these boxes inside, we'll see what matches up as a length and a width and multiply to get that product. x times x is x squared. 3 times x is 3x. 11 times x is 11x. And 11 times 3 is 33. Now we need to add these up to get our final product. We have like terms here, so we can combine these, and we'll bring the rest down. An area model, or the box method, helps you remember that every term in this first polynomial has to multiply every term in the second polynomial. It not only keeps your work nice and neat, but it also has a real meaning. It, the reason it works is because that's how area is calculated. Let's set up an area model for these. 2a squared, be sure you're paying attention if you ever have a negative or a minus. All right, negative 7a times 2a squared. Multiply the coefficients and then watch out for the exponents here. Negative a times negative 5 is a positive 35a. 
2 times 2a squared is 4a squared. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Let's go ahead and look for like terms. In this case, there aren't any. So we want to be sure we write this in standard form, starting with our highest degree or largest exponent. Negative 14a cubed plus 4a squared plus 35a minus 10. You can also use the distributive property or FOIL to multiply these two polynomials. Be sure you start with this first term and multiply everything in the second term. It helps to keep track of this either by drawing lines or underlining as you go. 2a squared times negative 7a is negative 14a cubed. 2a squared times 2. Now I move on to my second term. This time I'm going to draw lines underneath. Negative 5 times negative 7a is positive 35a. And negative 5 times a positive 2 is a negative 10. Either way works. If you tend to not be the neatest, then I prefer having this nice setup so you can see everything nice and clear. Let's do a little experiment. Some students see this and think that they can just apply this exponent to both numbers. Let's see what happens. 7 squared is 49. 3 squared is 9. Add those together and I get 58. But let's back up here. If we use order of operations to simplify this expression, 7 plus 3 is 10 and 10 squared is 100. 58 does not equal 100, so be sure that you do not just simply stick this exponent on both of these numbers. This here is incorrect. If you see a polynomial and an exponent outside the parentheses, rewrite the polynomial twice. x plus 12 squared just means x plus 12 times x plus 12. Now we can distribute or do an area model. x times x is x squared. x times 12, 12x. x times 12, 12x. And 12 times 12 is 144. Now if I write this as a polynomial, I have x squared. Notice I have like terms here. 12x and 12x combined to give me 24x. And then my constant is 144. Let's back up and see how this would have worked with this number up here. 7 plus 3 times 7 plus 3. We could distribute or do a box method here. 7 times 7, 49. 7 times 3, 21. 7 times 3 is 21. 3 times 3 is 9. Now if we add all of these up in here, we'll get a total of 100, which is what we wanted. What about when you're multiplying a binomial times a trinomial? FOIL doesn't really work here because it doesn't have all the letters we need in order to multiply everything. But you can still distribute if you can keep up with multiplying everything in the first polynomial by everything in the second polynomial. I'm going to do an area model to help us keep track of everything. Okay, here I set up one of the polynomials. Notice that I keep the sign with the term that follows it and then I set up each term of the second polynomial. Now let's multiply and fill in each box. Negative 3x times x is negative 3x cubed. Negative 3x times negative 5 is positive 15x squared. x times 10x, 10x times negative 5, x times negative 7, Negative 5 times negative 7 is positive 35. Now we want to add all these together to get our total area or our final product. Let's go ahead and look for like terms. These are like terms. These are like terms. And these two are just their own thing. So we have negative 3x cubed. 10x squared and 15x squared combined to give me 25x squared, negative 7x and negative 50x, 
negative 57x, and then we have plus 35. What if you have more than two polynomials that you need to multiply? First, focus on two polynomials at a time. So let's focus on these first two, and we're going to multiply these. a times 3a is 3a squared. a times 2 is 2a. Now we'll move on to this positive 8. 8 times 3a is 24a, and 8 times 2 is 16. Let's go ahead and clean this up by combining these like terms in the middle. 2a plus 24a is 26a, and we'll bring down the 16. Now we can move on and multiply by the third polynomial. Okay, I brought the third one down, and now I'm going to multiply these two polynomials. I'll start with the first term here and multiply both terms in the second polynomial. 3a squared times negative 5a. That gives me a negative 15a cubed. 3a squared times negative 4 is negative 12a squared. Now I'll keep moving on to the next term and multiply both of these. 26a times negative 5a is a negative 130a squared. 26a times negative 4 is negative 104a. And then I'll multiply 16 by both of these terms. 16 times a negative 5a is negative 80a. And 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. Now let's look for like terms and write this in standard form. Negative 15a cubed, that's the only one where I have an exponent of 3. I have two items here that have a squared, so I need to combine these coefficients. I have a negative 12 and a negative 130. So that gives me a negative 142a squared. Then I have two terms that have just an a, so I have a negative 104a and a negative 80a. Those combine for a negative 184a and then my constant of negative 64. Keep in mind when you're multiplying more than one polynomial, these are each factors here. So we have three factors. Think about how you would multiply 2 times 3 times 4. You would multiply 2 times 3, and then you would multiply it by 4. Same thing works for polynomials. Keep in mind when you're multiplying polynomials, what you are creating is an equivalent expression. These two things are equivalent. So if you want to check your answer, you can pick out a value for your variable, plug it into both expressions, and they should have the same value.